to us. Anywhere in the court. Anywhere in the BG district. Yeah. All right, so we need to call the meeting order. All right, we'll call the meeting order. What's the first item of discussion? Well, we're waiting on Barbara Thompson. We're going to wait on Barbara Thompson for the actual public hearing. And we have a request tonight from Mr. Jang, owner of 218 South Main Street, which is known as the Pearl Restaurant. And their request is a conditional use permit to permit apartments on the second floor of their building. Okay? Well, but I have something else that I would like for you guys to consider. And I make it stoned, sure enough. And I don't mean the good kind of stone, I don't mean the bad kind of stone. Um, I get regularly requests for people to put manufactured homes in town. Okay? We get them constantly. Okay? Manufactured homes are, everybody does a single wide manufactured home, a double wide manufactured home, single wide, double wide, and then we have modular homes, which are treated exactly the same as a stick built home. They may look like a manufactured home, but they have different construction standards. Okay? Instead of using uh, what the, the Boca Code construction for a double wide, it is the same Boca Code construction standard for stick built. And I think Larry went through this some time ago with um, Lee Scott's parents that were building a home over there on North Center Street, and it was a modular, wasn't a manufactured home, so it is permissible in really any zoning district. Okay, the same as a stick built house. Okay? But I'm getting consistent requests for double wise. Okay? Double wide manufactured home is a proper term. They're not being requested in Epping and Forest, obviously. Okay? But they are being requested in some of our low and moderate income neighborhoods. Okay? And the question is to you <coughs> right now in the R2 district, the R2 district, it is not permissible to put a manufactured home of any kind in the R2. Okay? Which encompasses uh, 4th Street, 5th Street, 6th Street area of town, it encompasses, it's probably 60% of the town is R2. And it is uh, on Jackson Street and Dillard Street, close from Mr. Tucker lives, Taylor Baum, uh, over near um, Viewmac, that area is all R2. Um, and I don't know if everywhere is appropriate, and I don't think every request is right. But I would like at least the Planning Commission to put some thought into, do we want to allow double wide manufactured homes as a conditional use, okay, and do we want to create any kind of new zoning districts to permit it? Here's the here's the rub. How do you say it's appropriate on force or not appropriate on Fourth Street and it's appropriate on Taylor Street? What I'm trying to avoid, and we're thinking and talking. What I'm trying to avoid is if you go to Carver Street, they're coming down faster than they're going up over there. Okay, we got to find ways that we can find housing options in town. If you go to Carver Street, I bet there's far fewer homes there than there were when I started working here. Okay? We tear them down, Taylor Street, places like that. But we don't want to create a situation where it's gerrymandered and it's a low-income neighborhood and, or it's a moderate-income neighborhood and then thus appropriate versus not. Um, something to think about, and I think you'd have to do some widespread rezoning in certain areas. But that means the property owners and the, and the residents in those districts are going to have to be agreeable because they'd like to do that. There's a gentleman that owns a property on Carver Street, just towards his house down. Uh, I came in to put a, a, a double wide in. There's a double wide that was put in down the street because there was an old single wide mobile home there that came out. And by code, just like on Northwest Avenue, when a single wide or a manufacturer goes out, you got to permit another one to go in. Um, think about it. I'm not asking for decisions tonight, but in order to do so, I think it would take some rezoning where the property owners were agreeable to it and then making it a conditional use in certain new zoning districts. Okay? But I think, I think it's something to look at because I think it's a housing type and a housing option that a lot of people will take advantage of. Yeah, but I don't think 60% of the town where they can take advantage of. Probably 75% of the town, 80% of the town. Because really the only place you can put a manufactured home on a single lot is out on Courthouse Road, and there's a few other little spots here and there that were established back in 1992. Okay? I'm not talking about single wide homes, because they'll still have to go into a, uh, a trailer park or a mobile home park or a manufactured home park. I'm talking about double wide that will be placed on a single lot. And I'll be honest with you, most lots in Blackstone are too small, anyhow. Okay? 
They're too narrow. If you go over on 4th Street, those rascals are 25 feet wide and 140 feet long, and not very many people have lost their well accommodated. Something to think about, because we are getting lots of requests, and in some of our neighborhoods, we're getting a lot fewer homes there, and we're tearing them down a whole lot faster than they're going back in there. Okay? And I think some of it may be because people can't afford either the cost of a modular home or the terms that are required with a modular home. If the bank is requiring 20% down and all those kinds of things, those closing costs are making it tough for folks put single family homes. And um, something to think about, something to put in your crawl. And How many requests do you get? We a couple of months. A month or? couple of months, yeah. Hmm. A couple of months. Okay. In fact, we had one up on Center Street. Uh, Young man, and he ended up buying a lot out of the courthouse there. So he's a double one. If he says he has a contract to buy it. Twice a month, I would say, would be a reasonable representation. That being said, we can go to the agenda if you'd like. Okay. okay. We have a, a public hearing. Is that what's in order here? There is a public hearing uh, for a conditional use request. Get up and I'll read to you the information. Attempt to pronounce it correctly, Liji, Liji Yang, is that correct? Okay. Mr. Yang is the owner of the uh, uh, 218 South Main Street, which we all know is the Pearl Restaurant. There's construction ongoing on the on the property now where a roof is being replaced and uh, some other improvements. Uh, the request that is before you is for an apartment, one apartment to be put on the second floor of the property. And uh, that is required to have a conditional use permit that would be ultimately approved or denied by the town council, and you guys can make a recommendation on that request. Uh, there are sp room for two parking spaces on site, so I don't think we have nearly the parking question, and it's far fewer units than I was expecting. So, one apartment unit, and how many bedrooms? Mm-hmm. It's a two-bedroom two unit, okay. And um, that is the request. It is before you. It has been powerly advertised and uh, is open for public hearing, if anybody would like to comment. If anybody wants to comment on this uh, application for rezoning a conditional use permit to put a, an apartment at uh, this location at 218 South Main Street, Two bedrooms, so how many people will be able to occupy the bedrooms? Like two couples, one couple per room? I think it would be I dictated mean, by building code. I don't know the actual answer to that. If, if it has to be family members or not, I don't think our zoning ordinance goes into that kind of detail. But I, I would have to find out from the building official how many so actually stay. Not five or six people in one room. Uh, no, I think that, that would be a violation. Just two? Okay. And you can make that part of the con the conditions, as you know, we can we can have some some restrictions, and I don't know if you get into that kind of detail, but certainly say not to exceed Boca Code uh, occupancy standards. If you'd like to add that as a condition. I don't think it's exactly in our domain, but do you know about entrances to the upstairs that they require to have two? I don't know the building code. How many uh, access points going upstairs? Uh, there's certainly one on the front that we're all familiar with. Is there going to be a second entrance to the apartment or just one? Just one? Again, the building official is going to have to dictate how many entrances. If it needs a second entrance, they may be required to put a second entrance in there. But... Um, yeah, I, do, I don't know the correct answer, but yes. mm -hmm. the acquisition of a, of a permit, and again, your conditions can be compliant with Boca Code standards. Yeah. And 
did I understand they were willing to put in uh, two parking spaces behind the building? My understanding from our discussion at the beginning that there would be two paved parking spaces provided on site. That's correct. Which, as we know from our previous meeting, is two per unit. So it is compliant with the, the parking, just irregardless of a number of bedrooms, two unit or two spaces are required per unit. No. And again, that can be part of your conditions that they, they comply with that. 13 dash 1.2 mm -hmm. under zoning ordinance. Is there any other discussion? I guess we'll close the public hearing. Yes, sir. Are there any other questions or concerns? But I do think making it compliant with Boca Code for occupancy and for uh, egress. Uh, egress and ingress, and then making sure that the two parking spaces are provided, I think are all legitimate requests. I don't think you're putting a hardship of any kind. Is that going to be included? I think it's uh, logically I would make those conditions. Okay, are there any questions or concerns uh, by any of the Planning Commission members? Second. Okay, Tommy's uh, made the motion. Barbara seconded. All those in favor of uh, this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by like sign. The motion is carried. I have nothing else to planning commission tonight. Okay. Any other discussion to come before the planning commission tonight? We'll let you know we'll be working on the uh, zoning maps and hopefully we'll have those revised within the next probably 30 days. Okay. Well, we'll adjourn the meeting. Okay. What time is it? 617. 617. 617. All right. Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>